Hello and welcome back. This was originally going to be a members only thing, but I think I will do, I'm doing the whole first episode as a freebie to kind of give you guys a preview and just talk about my love of Charmed. I've done some minor edits to this due to Shannon Doherty's passing and I hope you guys enjoy. Here is my retro review of season one of Charmed. The late 90s gifted viewers with a plethora of memorable shows, but few have maintained a lasting appeal and cultural impact of Charmed. It premiered on October 7th, 1998, and it premiered in the UK in 1999. Charmed introduced audiences to the Hallowell sisters, their extraordinary journey as the most powerful witches of all time, and season one sets the stage for a magical series that blended fantasy, drama, and sisterhood in a way that resonated with viewers worldwide. Let's revisit the iconic first season as we dive into what made it stand out. The heart of Charmed is the bond between the three sisters, Prue, Piper, and Phoebe. The series kicks off with the sisters reuniting in their home in San Francisco, and when they discover their destiny as witches, each sister brings her own unique personality and power to the mix. Prue, the eldest, is strong-willed telekinesis. Piper is the middle sister who can freeze time. And Phoebe, the youngest, is gifted with premonitions. The chemistry between them is fantastic. The casting, if you want the honest truth, despite the backstage stuff, I think the casting in this show was absolutely wonderful and there was a genuine bond. It's a shame that drama kind of overshadowed some of it. Their, their inter interactions filled with both tension and tenderness are authentic and engaging, and the dynamic is critical. The show not only explores the supernatural, but their struggles with everyday life and relationships. A huge influence on this show was the brilliant book by Alice Hoffman, Practical Magic. Practical Magic is one of my favourite novels, and they even admit, Holly Marine Combs admitted in her podcast, that it was a huge influence, and they kept going back to that. The relationships, the people, and the fact that the relationships between them were paramount, and the supernatural struggles, although tension building, always had an emotional resonance, rather than just being a monster of the week. I think one of the show's stronger strengths lies in the ability to blend the supernatural with the mundane. The Halliwell sisters may be battling demons, warlocks, and dark forces, but they also deal with relatable issues such as career challenges, romantic challenges, and sibling rivalry. This blend makes the characters more relatable and the fantasy elements more grounded, a little element of magical realism within a fantastical world. The writers clearly intertwine the sisters' magical abilities with their personal growth. For instance, Prue's struggle with control in her personal life is mirrored with her developing telekinetic powers, while Piper's ability to freeze time often symbolises her desire to pause and find clarity amongst the chaos. And Phoebe's premonitions drive her curiosity in her journey of self-discovering, highlighting her role as the soul and the heart of the trio. I honestly believe the way they did that was just genius. And considering this was an Aaron Spelling production, the depth always surprised me. Season 1 of Charmed is rich with memorable episodes that establish the show's mythology and tone. The pilot episode, Something Wiccan This Way Comes, has a strong foundation by introducing the sisters' powers and the Book of Shadows. Other standout episodes include Dream Sorcerer, which delves into the dangers of power and obsession, and The Fourth Sister, which explores themes of jealousy and belonging. The series introduces great supporting characters such as Andy, played by T.W. King, Prue's love interest and detective who becomes entangled in their world, and Leo Wyatt, a mysterious handyman with a hidden agenda. These characters enrich the storyline and provide additional layers to the sisters' lives, and the mundane characters in the background help keep things moving. 
For a late 90s show, Charmed boasts some reasonably impressible, impressive special effects and set design. While occasionally dated by today's standards, I think it adds to the charm and the nostalgia. The Halliwell Manor, with its Victorian aesthetic and magical ambience, becomes a character in its own right. Hint, hint to later seasons. This, as season one, successfully lays the groundwork for the series. It introduces viewers to a world where magic is real, but there are also struggles of balancing one's destiny with personal desire. The show portrays strong, independent female characters who rely on each other to navigate life's challenges. And honestly, the women in this show remind me of women in my life. I always say this, Prue is my mother. (laughs) And I mean that as a compliment. Honestly, I think the show set a standard and was always kind of the poor man's Buffy back in the day. A lot of people ribbed on Charmed. And I don't know why. A brilliant series that just kept us watching. Revisiting Charmed, is, uh, season one, is like opening a time capsule from 1998. It reminds us of a time when television dared to explore the fantastical while staying grounded in relatable human experiences. The Halliwell sisters' journey is one of empowerment, love and resilience, and the themes continue to resonate with audiences old and new. As we celebrate the legacy of Charmed, it's clear the power of free will always set us free, right? As someone that watched this show, I became intrigued by it. Buffy and Charmed were my sort of go-to, so were Roswell. Yes, I'm that generation. When Buffy and Roswell was on BBC Two after The Simpsons, on Tuesday and Thursday, and Charmed was on Channel 5 in the evenings. Charmed moved to Channel 4 in the UK for its last season, and why I don't think that was their best, and there were a few missteps along the way, Charmed has continued to stay where we go. Now, how to watch Charmed. Charmed is available on a plethora of streaming services. You can watch it on Amazon Prime in the UK, And I'm not sure on the US, but I think it's pretty much the same, isn't it? Correct me if I'm wrong. You can also get them readily on DVD very cheaply, and second-hand market is very good for them. I own the complete set in a replica Book of Shadows, I might add, which I think is fabulous. I also own them remastered on Blu-ray. And I'm waiting for them to put the full remaster on streaming because it's absolutely brilliant. Yes, there are clearly moments where actors aren't really engaging and they're waiting for their cue, but they're pretty much ignorable. Unlike the remaster of Buffy, where it was bad. Charmed, despite some minimal cropping, was shot predominantly widescreen and just cropped 4.3 to fit the standards of television at the time. The remaster cleans up a lot of the special effects without changing them, so they look good rather than let's redo everything, and keeps the beautiful framing and set design of Charmed. There's no major cropping and no one's headshot seems to be in the way of missing a punchline. I always say this, it's comfort TV, it's coffee TV, it's sitting at home in the evening, on a rainy evening watching TV, TV. Charmed has a really special place in my heart, and it's a huge part of my life. I've met the actresses that have been in that show, and they're fascinating their own rights. So, let's leave this one here. And I hope you enjoy what's to come. So that was my review of episode of season one of Charmed and I'm gonna say this I'm doing this one publicly and free on all platforms partly because I feel like it's a nice tribute to the brilliant Shannon Doherty but maybe to give you a preview of what's to come and maybe if you like you will consider becoming a channel member or joining Patreon I hope you guys have a wonderful day and uh I hope you like this little exploit into the late 90s, an era that I genuinely miss.